Japanese authorities are testing a system aimed at quickly providing radiation data to people living near nuclear power plants. Officials from the Nuclear Regulation Authority are conducting the test run at the Sendai nuclear power plant in southwestern Japan. Kyushu Electric Power Company plans to bring the facility back online next month. The information would be posted on the internet in the event of an accident at a nuclear power plant. The central and local governments would make the data accessible to local residents as well as organizations. The users would access a page on the authority's website. The page for the Sendai plant shows updated figures from 73 observation points within a 30-kilometer radius, as well as from cars equipped with radiation monitoring equipment. Symbols are colored in red or yellow when the numbers exceed government standards. The government reviewed its nuclear emergency guidelines following the 2011 accident at the Fukushima Daiichi plant. The new guidelines call for the evacuation of residents within a 5 to 30 kilometer radius from a power plant if radiation levels exceed the government Officials limit. Officials with Japan's biggest utilities say they will cut greenhouse gas emissions by 35 percent by 2030. The energy sector is Japan's largest emitter of CO2 gases. The target refers to the amount of gases emitted from generating one kilowatt hour of electricity. The group says the cuts from 2013 levels will bring them back to pre-Fukushima levels in 2010. Fifty nuclear power plants were online at that time. Japan has imported massive quantities of fossil fuels since the nuclear disaster in 2011. Utilities will have to generate more energy from renewable sources and restart some nuclear plants to achieve the goal of cutting gases. But Environment Ministry officials say it's not clear how the energy sector can achieve the target. They say they want more concrete details. A panel looking into accounting irregularities at Toshiba Corporation blames the company's top management. The investigators say executives played a role in systematic wrongdoing at the company. Members of the third-party panel of experts submitted a report on Monday to Toshiba President Hisao Tanaka. The group conducted interviews with about 200 senior company officials. Their report finds accounting irregularities in several of the firm's businesses, including infrastructure construction, semiconductors, and personal computers. The report says officials need to revise downward Toshiba's operating profits for the past five years to the tune of more than 150 billion yen, or about $1.2 billion. The report states that top executives intentionally inflated profits. It says senior officials involved in the misconduct must be aware of their responsibility, and it calls for the company's management to be changed. President Tanaka will hold a news conference on Tuesday. He'll address how his company will handle the panel's nuclear findings. Nuclear power in Japan. Toshiba has maintained a large nuclear business focused mostly on boiling water reactors. With the purchase of the American Westinghouse by 5.4 billion U.S. in 2006, which is focused mainly on pressurized water reactor technology, it increased the size of its nuclear business about twofold. Toshiba has plans to continue significant expansion in the next decade. Nuclear expert. We should be very worried about ongoing catastrophe at Fukushima. Complete failure of ice wall built to contain extremely radioactive water. Plutonium is flowing into Pacific, will for many years to come. Strontium in ocean hits record level, huge increase reported since April. Excerpts from presentation by Arnie Gunderson, for Ruins Chief Engineer. July 16, 2015. Are the meltdowns at Fukushima Daiichi over? This catastrophe is not over. We should continue to be very worried. Three of the nuclear cores at Fukushima Daiichi are in direct contact with groundwater. Nuclear power designers and engineers never anticipated that possibility. Fukushima Daiichi Unit No. 1, No. 2, and No. 3 were destroyed allowing holes and cracks to form. 
We know for sure that the Fukushima Daiichi containments are full of holes that allow groundwater to come in direct contact with each nuclear core. Groundwater is still leaking in and leaking out at a rate of at least 300 tons per day. More than 1,500 days have passed. 23,000 tanker truckloads of radioactive water have already leaked into the Pacific Ocean. Worse yet, there is no end in sight. As for ruins anticipated, the ice wall is a complete failure. Cesium, strontium and plutonium from Fukushima Daiichi will continue to bleed into the Pacific Ocean for decades because the groundwater flow is unmitigated. Japan Express looks on silently due to the real threat and constraints of the Government S Secrecy Act. The true human, financial and environmental costs of this nuclear power catastrophe are not publicized and discussed. TEPCO reported on July 17 that strontium-90 concentrations in the ocean outside Fukushima Units 3 and 4 are at record highs. Levels have spiked around 1,000% in three months. Strontium-90 measured between Unit 3 and 4 intake channel. July 17 report, 1,500 BQ-LBIC barrels per liter. April 23 report, 150 BQ-LBIC barrels per liter. Strontium-90 measured at Unit 4 screen. July 17 report, 1,500 BQ-LBIC barrels per liter. April 23 report, 120 BQ-LBIC barrels per liter. According to TEPCO's July 17 report, the total level of all beta ray emitters, which includes strontium-90, was 1,200 big barrels per liter yet the levels reported for strontium-90 were 1,500 big barrels per liter. When a similar occurrence happened last year, Asahi reported, strontium levels exceeded the all beta readings in some instances, leading the utility to decide they were wrong. TEPCO's corrected data revealed much higher levels. Japanese government officials are considering a compromise on a sensitive trade issue. They're thinking about relaxing import quotas on U.S. rice under the umbrella of the Trans-Pacific Partnership negotiations. They hope the concession will help the 12 countries participating in the talks reach a final agreement. Rice imports are the main sticking point between Japan and the U.S. Washington is demanding Japan boost its imports from the U.S. by 175,000 tons. Officials in Tokyo oppose the idea, saying it may have a negative impact on Japanese farmers. Instead, they want to increase the quota by about 70,000 to 80,000 tons. It's not known whether the U.S. will accept the proposal. Japanese officials hope to resolve their disagreements with the U.S. when ministers from all the TPP countries meet in Hawaii from July 28. Negotiators from the two sides have been talking about maintaining tariffs on five categories of farm products. Instead, Washington wants to cut tariffs on U.S. beef and pork over the period of more than 10 years. The two countries are also at odds over U.S. tariffs on Japanese automotive parts. Now, tourism is a key industry in the southern island prefecture of Okinawa, and the number of tourists continues to rise. That's good news for hotel managers, but they're facing a serious problem, a labor shortage. A survey shows that 70% of hotels and restaurants in the island complain of not having enough staff. NHK World's Daisuke Azuma reports. <laughs> Beautiful beaches a turquoise sea, and a unique culture. It's no surprise large numbers of tourists are drawn to Okinawa. Last year, more than 7 million people visited. 
I come from Taiwan. Love it. Love it. Very nice. Okinawa is enjoying a hotel construction boom. This hotel will open next year. More than 20 large hotels have been built in the past five years. But the resorts have a big problem. The labor shortage is serious at the bigger resort hotels. It's especially difficult to find top quality housekeeping staff. Retaining workers is now a major challenge for the hotel industries. She is one of the roughly 900 part-time staff at the gerontorial company. The firm needs 100 more to meet the demand of its hotel clients. But its latest round of hiring yielded only about a dozen new workers. We're trying our best to recruit new staff, but we're falling short. Besides, veteran workers are retiring, so the labor shortage is affecting our business seriously. The company is running shuttle buses that dispatch workers to resort hotels to keep their numbers up. The commute can take as long as an hour. The company is hiring about 80 students from Asia. Veteran staff teach them how to clean rooms. Company managers say it takes time for them to learn the skills of the job. We cannot continue our business without foreign students. If I could hire more people, I could get new work from the new hotels and improve the quality of our service. Honestly, it's frustrating. Hotel managers are worried about an outflow of staff seeking better working conditions. Kenji Yamashiro has given his employees raises of up to 7% to retain staff. It adds up to about $25,000 a year in additional costs. Yamashiro has also decided to eliminate overtime work. He says hotel staff often have to work long hours, and that's a big reason why young people seek their jobs. We want to keep our employees, so we will create a friendly working environment and make our hotel management more transparent. Some analysts believe the labor crunch in Okinawa's tourism industry will grow more serious. Tourism is a big industry in Okinawa, but there is no school to learn tourism and hotel management, and not all hotels are big enough to develop human resource. I think the local government and the industry need to come up with a system for that. Local government officials want to increase the number of visitors to 10 million within the next six years. To realize that, they will first need to make the labor environment of the local tourism industry more attractive. Robots that look like humans can be found in Japan's nursing care facilities and department stores. Now major banks have become the latest employers of the humanoids. Executives at Mizuho Bank handed an employee certificate to Pepper at a branch in Tokyo. The humanoid was developed by SoftBank. Pepper has a touch screen display in its chest that gives financial uh, information. Customers can also play games with the robot. The officials plan to introduce more of them to other branches. They're considering using the humanoids in the future to explain financial products. Hello, may I help you? Officials at Tokyo Mitsubishi UFJ introduced a humanoid in April on a trial basis. They're considering using it to give guidance to customers. Tourists have been visiting Mount Fuji for the great views and hiking. Now, local officials and business owners are trying to make sure they'll come back for the fruit. Yamanashi Prefecture in central Japan is known for its delicious peaches. Local government officials have teamed up with agriculture cooperatives and hotels to promote the fruit. They hope people who come to see Mount Fuji will develop a taste for this local delicacy. Tourists from China had the chance to sample and buy freshly harvested peaches. 
Officials surveyed the visitors to see what would get them to come back. They asked if they knew the fruit is from Yamanashi. Japanese peaches are sweeter and juicier than Chinese ones. They look cute, too. Yamanashi is a fruit paradise. I hope many visitors will come to enjoy the combination of Mount Fuji and tasty local fruit. Officials also plan to promote a variety of other local produce. They hope their efforts will give tourism and overseas sales peachy prospects.